From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Ford South Africa in April shipped its first batch of locally produced plug-in hybrid electric vehicle ranges for the European, New Zealand and Australian markets. Moliné Arnoldi visited the upgraded plant. Ford Silverton plant in Pretoria is the sole production site globally for the Ford Ranger PHEV, which is now producing about 200 of these models a day. The company spent 5.2 billion rand on upgrades to the plant to accommodate for the manufacturing of PFs, including a brand new battery assembly plant and modernizations to the assembly lines. The battery plant can produce 62,000 battery packs a year. While Ford South Africa imports the battery arrays, the balance of components comprising the battery pack are produced locally. The PF battery plant links with the assembly plant through a hybrid conveyor system, which marks the first use of a hybrid conveyor system in all of Ford's battery assembly plants globally. Ford South Africa Operations Director Rhys Davies tells us more. For the PF, the major modifications that we did was the actual battery pack plant itself. So we had an existing building or canopy, it wasn't actually a building. We converted that into a battery plant that can convert all those battery arrays into a battery pack. Uh, we that line itself is about 12 JPH. We're running two shifts at the moment, but we can build up to 60,000 battery packs in that facility. That facility itself fully air conditioned with the latest technologies, with vision systems to ensure batteries are secured, controlled, done in the correct sequence, and then the battery pack itself validated with both air leakages, leakage tests, and with the electronic tests that we need to do on every battery pack. In addition to stringent testing procedures for the batteries, Ford also modernised its chassis, stamping and body shop segments in the plants. The body shop upgrades included a new load box floor production line designed to accommodate the battery packs for positioning on the vehicles. Davies elaborates. With the added battery in the back of the frame, we have to widen the frame so that the rear half of the frame is all unique for the PHEV to allow that battery pack to fit within the, batter, uh, the, the actual frame rails and to accommodate for the spare wheel that goes in the same space. Additionally, within our body shop, because we've got the e-motor, the transmission and e-motor is actually longer. So we have to change the floor in the body shop. And obviously the obvious one, which is the easiest way to tell the difference between a PF and a base model, is the two fuel doors on the side, one for the charging port, port and one for the petrol. All of the company's staff underwent extensive electrical and safety training, including the site's emergency response teams, since battery-related fires require special extinguishing. Davies tells us more about the new safety procedures in the plant. Huge amount of training with our people. You know, the battery itself, everybody reads the media and the news about incidents regarding battery vehicles and battery packs. So the amount of training, we have to train every single employee in this site. Even if they don't work on the battery, they might work on an electric vehicle. So if you touch an electric vehicle for any, any particular reason, outside of your normal process, we actually de-energise the vehicle so then it makes it in a safe state uh, by locking the vehicle out. And then you can work on the vehicle and then we re-energise the vehicle. But a lot of the safety we have is you know, training our emergency response team on site, training the people that work actually on the battery pack itself about the dangers and about the equipment, about the set sequences that we need to do on the battery. Because if you don't do anything in the right sequence, then it can end up being uh, an issue with the battery pack or put yourself at danger at risk. So huge amounts of training with our emergency response, with our operators, with our teams, and huge amounts of controls, vision systems on electrical connections, uh, different fire extinguishers, fire blankets, and like I said, the emergency response team off-site, doing off-site training with battery packs so they know how to handle and understand if we do have an incident, what to do in that situation. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.